If you're wearing cotton, you're wearing water. A lot of water. It takes water to grow cotton and to manufacture your t-shirt or jeans. And it takes you water to wash it. The majority of water you use comes from growing cotton. It's a very thirsty crop. And it's often grown in places where water is scarce. So water conservation and efficiency are vital, especially since cotton is one of the most profitable crops in the world. To grow cotton, you need a lot of fertilizer and pesticides. Over 10% of all pesticide use in the world is dedicated to cotton production, which is useful to attain higher yields, but can be harmful to workers. And when pesticides are carried away by the wind, they can become a serious source of pollution, not only for neighboring farms, but for surrounding communities as well. So if you care about the environment, you should care about how the cotton in your genes is grown. Remember, you are no different than the farming practices used to make this cotton, because you are what you wear. A number of companies that make or sell clothing are now taking a closer look at cotton. From seed to store, their Better Cotton Initiative has defined a series of principles vital to more ethical and responsible cotton production. They're helping cotton producers minimize the negative impacts of fertilizers and pesticides. They're also thinking about working conditions in cotton fields caring for soil health and nature, and reducing water use. And when textile manufacturers receive a bale of cotton, they refine each step in the production process to conserve and use water more efficiently. In some cases, water can be recycled and certain manufacturing practices can be combined or eliminated. At Levi's Eureka Innovation Lab in San Francisco, California, they're exploring alternatives that save water in the manufacturing process. They use new holistic design principles that look at the entire life cycle of a pair of jeans, from field to mill to you, while creating social value. They strive to make things better by focusing on sustainability through greater efficiency. And they're thinking about how denim is finished by experimenting and fine-tuning a number of practices designed to use water more effectively. And in some cases, use no water at all. Instead of using water, computer-guided lasers can etch photographically reproduced wear patterns into new genes while various sandpaper techniques replicate the look of distressed denim. And even ozone gas is used to fade denim to just the right look. These and other waterless practices that begin in this lab are now being shared with the entire clothing industry. It's all about integrating holistic design principles and simply making things better. So how much water does it take to make a t-shirt? When you add it all up, it can be more than 700 gallons. Or it can be none at all. How's that possible? The answer might be hidden in your own closet. All those clothes you never wear that end up getting thrown away can actually be donated. They end up in facilities where professional sorters separate wool from polyester from cotton. Then it's rebundled and either sent halfway around the world or passed on to closed-loop recycling companies. They mix these clothes with scraps from textile factories and even old plastic bottles to make new fibers. It's why instead of taking 713 gallons of virtual water to make a t-shirt, one made from recycled cotton uses no water at all. Denim creates its own recycling challenges. Metal zippers, buttons, and rivets all have to be removed, and that's not easy. But new technologies can break jeans down and turn them into a fiber with an amazing number 
of new uses. Upcycling, which finds new uses for things we'd otherwise discard, transforms worn out jeans into insulation and sound dampening materials used in everything from cars to refrigerators. How many pairs of jeans get upcycled in this facility? Eight million pairs in a single year. Clothing manufacturers are also finding new textile materials in unusual places. The rubber used to make some wetsuits now comes from Wayule, a drought-resistant plant grown in the Arizona desert, where it requires little or no water at all. New materials for clothing can even come from wood. Tensol, a textile manufactured from eucalyptus trees, requires less land and less water to grow. It inspires designers to rethink not only how they design their clothes, but to choose materials based on the sustainable practices they represent. Because conserving water isn't only turning off the faucet, it's also learning more about the water you wear. To explore terms like closed loop recycling, virtual water, better cotton, wayule, waterless, and upcycling, visit lexiconofwater.com for a collection of people and ideas that can change the world.